My name is Pedro Veloso, and I'm a PhD candidate at Carnegie Mellon University. Professor Ramesh Krishnamurti is my advisor, and I'm going to present a paper on Academy of Spatial Agents. The topic of the paper is interactive spatial synthesis with agent-based models. Uh, these models, they rely on the interaction between agents and environment, and they support fine-grained interaction. So our motivation to choose them uh, is to is to support an idea of spatial synthesis as a form of open game where the layout or the conf spatial configuration relies on a dialogue between uh, designers and, and computational agents in real time. And the challenge is that uh, generally agent-based models are, are, are important from other fields or areas, so it's hard to adapt them for custom uh, spatial requirements because they were uh, designed for other tasks. Uh, so our goal is to develop custom agent-based models that can solve sp specific spatial conflicts in, in architectural design and then can also uh, develop custom behaviors for custom architectures. Our approach to use a branch of machine learning called reinforcement learning. So in reinforcement learning, you can encode a goal, in our case we want to encode like spatial goals, uh, as a reward signal. So in the interaction between agent and environment, the environment uh, can send a reward signal. So the agent's able to, uh, to learn how to select actions, how to behave in order to maximize future cumulative rewards. Uh, the paper addresses P1, prototype one, is an initial prototype of this research. And uh, the prototype, it uses a discrete representation. So you can see here five agents. Uh, each agent has a different shape. It represents a different space. And each agent, more specifically, is represented as a series of grids. Each grid contains different information about uh, the agent or about the environment. So the agent can perceive the whole environment and the agent uh, is connected to some of the neighbors. So the closest neighbors can, can visualize and see the neighbors and, and its goals. Um, but in terms of actions, the agent is constrained by a, a smaller um, grid that we call action grid. So the agent can only select uh, cells inside this grid to try to expand or try to retract. Uh, so the agent can combine expansion and retraction to move or to change its shape. And, and then... Uh, the agent can also uh, start to collaborate and try to generate a layout uh, by collaborating with other agents. And in terms of objectives, we use adjacency, area, and shape. And uh, by shape, we, we, we are referring to, as, as in this case, for, for the attempt of the agent to try to minimize the number of folds in the shape. So the, the, the agent's trying to be like a rectangle with no folds. Uh, if it's a, an L shape, it will have a one fold. This example here has two folds and so on. So we combine this, uh, these functions, uh, we combine these objectives using a function and the difference between this, the value of that function uh, between two time steps is, is used as a reward signal. And in terms of learning algorithm, uh, you can see more details in the paper here, I just mentioned that we use the DeepQ network and we developed a custom neural network for our problem. In terms of our experiment, we trained uh, six agents, so six spatial agents in, in randomly generated environments. Um, and we use this specific function here to combine adjacency area and shape. And you can see more details of the training setup in the paper. But after training, we want to evaluate uh, if these agents are able to generalize uh, their knowledge to novel situations, if the model uh, the knowledge in the model that selects, that we use to select actions, we want to call policy, if this can be generalized to an environment with more agents and, and also different uh, characteristics. So in this case, we are, uh, the agents are representing a house. So you can see there are 12 rooms with different adjacencies and areas. Each agent is one room. And the agents trying to, in this case of the video, the agents trying to uh, create a layout inside this irregular boundary here. But we also, for the paper, we also tested with the environment C, which has a stream and a bridge. So the agent uh, tries to occupy both sides of uh, this stream. Uh, besides, we also want to check if the table is able to recover from external influence, because the goal of this uh, 
prototype in the future is to interact with, with designers. So the idea is not that we'll, uh, it will only like generate multiple layouts or look for an optimal, optimal layout by itself, but it should uh, react to external influence and, and help to explore, explore like specific layouts locally and in real time. And the way we try to do that is by alternating between re a random policy, uh, we can see in red a random policy when I mean like the actions are selected randomly, and also in the in phases where the agent selects the actions mostly using the knowledge acquired during training. So you can see that in scenario A, uh, the agents start occupying the top of the hill. These are just like some some time steps we selected for visualization. The agents occupy the top of the hill and they start generating like good layouts and then they're able after uh, randomness they're able to recover and then they start generating other good layouts uh, and you can see in the graph that the performance of the agents with respect to adjacent area and shape is good overall and they're able to recover from randomness so this is a phase of randomness and the agent recovers scenario c uh, has has also also has a good performance in this case the agents has a challenge of trying to occupy both sides of the stream. So there's a sector of the house on one side and another sector on the other. And the agent, uh, in this case, the agent is connecting both sectors with uh, social space over the stream. The performance, the agents are able to recover. They generate different layouts, good layouts. You can see in the graph here. And we conclude that we successfully trained the agents and the agents were able to generalize to new settings and our parameterized objectives were successful. Uh, in, the, in the future, actually, we are developing prototype two. Uh, we use more efficient workflows. Uh, the environment is uses var variable size, so we can change the size of the environment, and we integrate with a game engine for real-time interaction with the designer.